At the counter again. Yeah, another sunny Alberta day. Uh, thanks to everybody that watches the videos and the patrons and everything else. Yeah, no, it's good. It's amazing. Yeah, you guys are uh, getting keep, after keeping it. Keeping it going. Keeping yeah, it keep going. going. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, we'll just talk about them. They're really cool cars. And, and you know, the yellow car I chased after for a long time. I heard about it. When this, if I can just quickly, when they started this Model T Racing Resurrection, because the last race they had here in Alberta was in 51, there's been some guys interested in this hobby for quite some time, just on a small scale, and they got together and put on a demonstration back in, I think, 2015. And uh, it was the 75th anniversary of the last race. And it caught on. And all of a sudden, bang, there's all these Model T races. And we decided, I got involved and created a car that looked like the old cars and then heard about these original race cars and chased after this car for a long time, phoning and hearing this guy had it, that guy had it, then he traded it off for a Chevelle and this guy did this and then and finally at a car show, a guy came up to me and said, hey, I got one of these. <laughs> and that's how, I, that's how I was found. Uh -huh. So the, the yellow car. And then there's a few left in the field that we're chasing after just to kind of save, but uh, Reynolds Museum down in Wetaskiwin uh, has quite a few, and there's just quite a few in uh, private hands that race still. So, I don't know, it's just a really interesting hobby. It's a lot of fun, uh, more or less a recreation of the arena. Yeah, and very neat. Uh, but, uh, they go pretty fast. And, uh, but uh, yeah, the weak link, crankshaft weak link, uh, driver weak link once in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Front no. end problem. <laughs> yeah. no, we can uh, elaborate on that another time. Perfect. But yeah, yeah, thanks for coming on. Let's uh, yeah. take a tour of these two little cars. Oh, we got a surprise too, maybe. Well, uh, here we are with something a little different today. Thought we'd uh, have a little fun. Yeah, time to go uh, racing. Racing season is upon us, yes. We can give you a little bit of a tour about these uh, two particular automobiles. They meet little vintage speed machines. Yeah, high speed, high pollutant. <laughs> Model yeah. T Ford race cars. Uh, why? That's the first question. Well, uh, in Alberta here, where we're from, the, uh, the Lions Club organized a, uh, in 1941, they organized a uh, fundraiser for displaced children from uh, World War II. And uh, they had a Model T race, just a jalopy race, in Calgary. And they had like 200 cars in the first race, and it caught on like wildfire, and tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people would come up and watch. And it went actively from 1941 until 1951. And uh, some of the most famous uh, Alberta and Western Canadian and world famous race car drivers and, and stuff started in Model T racing and went on to you know, stock car racing or sprint car racing or what have you, roadster racing here. So this is like the forefront of backyard mechanics enjoyment uh, at the racetrack. So these two cars that we're gonna show you here today were originally built back in the 40s, the mid 40s, and uh, and I'll just give you a little bit of a tour. But uh, here's a, an old uh, pamphlet here from from the Model T race meet in uh, in Edmonton. Oh, yeah, is that an original or? Uh, no, this is a reproduction. I have an original though, but uh, I just don't want to get all dirty. <laughs> so, anyways, this is a uh, there they are there just racing up a storm. You see, look yeah. at this 12 and a half miles to get the Hudson Bay Cup. Oh, the first prize. Look at that. There's a lot of beans in 1951. This is the last race, by the way. Ah. That was a... But it's really interesting. Like, this car here is number 24. It was originally campaigned by uh, Bob Villatard. His brother, Tom Villatard, had number 23. Cars were almost identical. Tom was the winningest racer of all time. And, uh, anyway, it's really cool to get this car because it's pretty much, well, it's almost as raced. We put it back. The original engine that was in the car, we broke the crankshaft in half. So I've got to rebuild that, so this is a replacement engine. But the car is as it was, and if you look in this neat old brochure here, you will see. Uh, okay, let's talk about this first. The Smeltzer Insurance was the sponsor, Bob Villatard Edmonton, number 24. You also could bet on these races. Oh, okay. Back then, they were at the horse race track, but this, and then uh, there's some famous names here. There's Stan Reynolds, uh, some of you familiar with the Reynolds Museum. Uh, Don Tupper went on to be a, well, he founded the Rodents Car Club in Edmonton and was a part of uh, stock car racing. Uh, I don't want to leave anything out, but it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a storied history of racing in Alberta, drag racing and everything. We could talk about it for 20 years, but uh, this is just a neat part of it. Now, I'll tell you about this. So, 
Tommy Fraser is another winning car. There's Tom Villatarda's brother, run number 23. Lions Motors was my mentor. That's Jim Foster, who's Duke Foster. And if you look here, Gavin Breckenridge, Edmonton. Now, Gav, airplane mechanic, or airplane guy, also founded Breckenridge Raceway, which was where they had stock car racing, and then went on to be the same place they had Speedway Park with all the drag racing fame. In Fast Company, the movie, if any of you have seen it, was filmed in Edmonton at Speedway Park, which was his farm. Anyway, like I said, we go on for years, but, but this car is an original race car, and Duke Foster raced against it. Well, we can just go around it. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, there were some rules involved in this racing, and we, we follow those rules today. There's a lot of these cars involved. Um, I actually built one from scratch before we ended up finding these cool original ones. Now, you gotta remember, these cars were raced until 1951, and then they weren't of importance at all anymore. So to, to still be around at all and not be scrapped is amazing. Oh yeah, you need this right? original, yeah. And so unfortunately this one had been brush painted, but we've, uh, well, okay, let's go through it. It's really, really cool. It's a narrowed roadster cowl. It's a really early frame. The original motor has a, a split block, like a 1914 engine, and aluminum hogshead and stuff, but that engine blew up, so. I've recreated the exhaust manifolds that it had from the pictures because uh, they were missing when, when we got the car. So it's two back halves of an exhaust split. So I'll just go through the rules then. The rules were it had to be stock Ford and uh, stock carburetor, stock Ford carburetor, stock Ford intake, exhaust manifolds, had to run buzz coils, and basically you had to prove, because you could bet on it, there, you had to prove it was like a stalker class. You had to be able to pull pistons and stuff, so there was tons of cheating that went on. Tons. And this engine, his brother, the winningest racer of all, cheated. <laughs> it's really cool, the original engine. All these secret speed stuff, this, this stock T speed stuff, these camshafts in these cars are all just welded up and hand filed, and it's pretty wild. But these cars, not this engine, unfortunately, the Babbitt in the connecting rods, on the main bearing part of the rod, when they bored the Babbitt, they bored it off center slightly, and it raised the compression way up. So you would never know that. <laughs> and then, uh, so it's got a 1916 and older head, which is called a low head, and so it's high compression. This one's just milled a little bit, but that one I'll show you is quite a bit. Uh, the intake manifold's flipped upside down. This carburetor is poured and polished and bored out, so it's just a holly but they've converted it to foot throttle, and then it's got this really neat mixture screw that runs through the, uh, all modified, this is all Ford, Ford equipment. So we've tried to kind of recreate some of what it was because it was missing. Um, yeah, this stuff though is as was, the, the handle, where the handle is. I wish I had the other hog's head because it's aluminum and it's got these really cool pedals, but this is all so we can race this here. Have a look at this neat throttle pedal they made. This is really neat. Uh, we put the gas in it, but if you oops. have a look at that, isn't that cool? Oh, you made that. Wow. And you can see the car was red originally, and in some of the pictures you can see that it was red. Very neat. Yeah, but original car, you can see the red paint coming through, so we're slowly working it. Uh, when I got the car, it was like in pieces, and somebody had started working on it, and I, I was lucky enough to, that he traded out of it. We tried to keep it as was. It's a bit uncomfortable. My dad drives this car. And he's forever whining about a few things, but you can't change. I just, you gotta keep it uh, as was, sort of. So that's basically this car, the Villatard car. Perfect. Well, let's take a look at the other one. Okay. This car here, I don't know as much about, but I do know that I love this car. And I actually recreated a Model T racer that uh, Jim can fill you in on. <laughs> and I kind of copied it after this car before I could get it. Now this car came out of Stan Reynolds' collection uh, through a fellow named Harry Lillo in Calgary who rebabbited the engine and then uh, kind of went through the car a bit and then I went through it again. But this car was built in the mid 40s and parked in about 1948 or 49 and just sat. So this car is as was. So that, and well that one is too, but this one really is. Yeah, this one. Come on and have a look how much this one's modified. This one's super low and crazy. So airplane seat, there's absolutely no brakes on this car at all. They're completely gone from the transmission. Yeah. There's no brakes on the back at all. 
This car originally had wood wheels, and I have the original patina matching wood wheels, which are 30 by 3 and a half, like the yellow car. But um, these wires were on it, and I just I've left them on for now. So these are like a 26, 27 Model T. Uh, but this this thing is just hammered. So they took they took the spring perch out of the spring perch hole, put it where the brakes used to go, and then shortened the frame. You can see here. Oh yeah, you yeah. had to get lower. Way lower. Like spring this, over the axle. Yeah, it's usually is... here, right? So you've automatically lowered it, well, that far. Yeah. Plus it's heated and bent. You can see with the torch here. This is torch bent. Oh yeah. It's just got a, yeah. Same as that, uh, well, the one that I built. Yeah. Uh, and then here we've got a similar knife switch that runs coils and then off the magneto. This one still runs a hand throttle and, and spark advance. And like I said, no brakes. This car is very uncomfortable to drive, but once you're in it, you're in it. <laughs> we've got this cool little tank. It was number 19, so it's still number 19. Oh yeah, you see that? And, and the, the, uh, the seat is just coming through. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? We got 1932 Ford Wishbones, two sets that were ruined to do this front suspension. You can see here they've yes. they've just mangled on this. Okay. Oh yeah, cut and weld and so bolted. Cool, though. I just love it. And then they've used the perch pin. They put the perches in upside down. All the nuts are welded. Then they hung this underneath so it's underslung. So you can't actually use the crank anymore. And it doesn't have provisions for a starter. So I'll show you how we started after. Uh, yeah, and it's got just so much character. This stove pipe, flex pipe exhaust, the coolest, I think. Oh yeah, it's incredible. I absolutely love this thing. And it's got this neat, I think it's off an aircraft for the throttle mixture, which is all made, but it works backwards, so you have to turn it the opposite direction that you want. There's a few things I want to change on the car to make it more period for later on, like this hose and things and some of the hose clamps, but yeah, and this carburetor is something Oh yeah, else. so here's a real modified one. So the intake, you see it's flipped upside down, and they actually shortened it. Oh yeah, And yeah. then they've ported it inside, it's all smooth and polished, and they made this just, just a straight smooth shot. And this is called a Holly straight through carb, they only use it for one year. But what they did was they brazed the hump up in it, the backbone, and they bored it right out. And they put a one inch butterfly out of a Holly G, which oh. is an earlier carb. So cheating, but not really. Yeah, yeah. And then this is the same low head as on that car, except it's got about that much taken off the bottom. And the compression is way up. The pistons come way up. There's hardly any rings on these pistons. Like this thing is made to rev. And it's got a crazy custom made camshaft. And it goes to beat the band. It really <laughs> does, yeah. But I'm just preserving it. And it's got also, if you look here, they put modern like tie rod ends on the instead of the Model T type on here, oh, just for yeah. strength. And then they've welded up and brazed up all oh, yeah, the uh, bars and stiffeners. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. But this car, I just I modeled the car that I built after this, which we'll probably do in a, in a, a video coming up. The resurrection of it because it's yeah. cool. Matt it, uh, reconstructed it, and I kind of deconstructed yeah, it. Yeah, Jim so. did a little uh, topsy turvy, <laughs> twisty tooty thing that kind of wrecked the car, but yeah. we'll fix it. And that one was number 25 because of, like I showed you in that book, that Jim Foster, Duke Foster, that was his racing number. He passed away uh, a while ago, but uh, he was my sponsor. So Duke actually raced these back in 1949, 50, and 51. And like back then, and then he sponsored my car, you know, in the last number of years and helped me build it. And I've just known Duke forever, but uh, he passed away, unfortunately. So that one's number 25. And, uh, but it's, it was funny, he would drive, he drove the T-Racer like he was 16 again. It was, uh, so there's something about these cars, whether they're stock or not, that they really do, I mean, they're just cool. Oh, they're And these cool. are like folk art. Like, I yeah. really think this is museum great, but this isn't, it's not so stuffy that you can't touch it. Well, which exactly. is something that absolutely it. ruins it. Like, you should yeah. be out and racing, if we break it, we'll fix it. Yeah. It's just you a model use it, Rebuild it. And so here they are, Model T Racers original. Uh, there's a there's quite a few of them around, believe it or not, that are still original raced cars. And it's fun to get them together and rip. And the guys build them, and we're gonna take these ones out on the weekend and see if they still perform. But uh, I don't know what else to tell you other than let's fire them up. Perfect. Let's fire Perfect. them up. Yeah, yeah. So this one here is, is still quite a motor. It's still quite a motor. So we'll just uh, it's no different than really a stock T. Uh, so there's the buzz coils, as per rules, 
I'll just open the mixture up a bit. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn the gas on. And I'm just going to give it a couple of tugs. There's no chokes or anything like that. They're full, full race. So you got to just use your hand over the... Uh... Now I got the ignition off. So don't be giving me a hard time. Oh, I'm cranking it. <laughs> and I'm just going to pour some fuel into it. It's really high compression thing. So we've got gas coming to the car now, so I'll hit the key, just retard it, and uh, see if she cranks. They've been sitting all winter, so we just dug them out. So let's have a look here. one started we got some gas in it so I think is that the right way I believe so there's gas on now to check oil on these T's there's these two pepcocks here and uh, oil has to be between the two sort of so if it's at the top one we're in good shape so you just open it up oh, there you go got oil Perfect. in it and uh, away we go you're ready for action this car is a bit of a process to get started compared to the other one so this one's a bit, uh, if I can remember now, this one's been sitting all winter too. So this one, like I said, doesn't have electric start, doesn't have crank. So what we're going to do, we're going to get her up in the air with our jack. And I'm going to put it in high gear like this. One more. Don't get that out of the Now. I will retard the spark a bit, put a little bit of throttle into it. I've got this opened up. I will uh, just give her one of these. Yeah, it's a...
you go. So that's the, uh, it kind of holds exhaust gas as you can see, but it's pretty cool. And if you look, this charred piece of plywood as original. That was on this car when it was found in the barn. It's been lit on fire. Been charring for years. years. When you're going down a track, it doesn't stay, it's just idling around, yeah. but uh, she's full race. Yeah. There's just no brakes or nothing, so once you're going, you're gone. So, what a fun little car, the really hot magneto. It's super fast. I don't know how fast. Well, we'll see what it does this weekend, but it's uh, it's the real deal. Standing in his field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old T runs pretty good. Well, she's got me all the way here. All the way. <laughs> As you can see. Look at the difference in the look at the height of the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah that's the big yeah, one. That says it all. Just get some perspective here, there you go. Yeah, right. Just half the height. Yeah. And these are stock T frames and yours shortened a bit. This are one's they short? This one is. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say longer because the the, well, it's longer. the axle swung it's out front. Probably which stock is really wheelbase, cool. but you can see here they they cut yeah, the they frame bounce. and move this in front of oh, the rear end and stuff. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, to get the spring down. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. as low as you can. Look you know over. what's really interesting? Both yeah. of these cars that's were parked crazy. around the same time. <laughs> yeah. That's right. This was. This one didn't get made into a race car, and this one did. Yeah. So and it was, is, would have been a would have been 50 50 like oh yeah you know, right. the value of dented up old farm tees <laughs> it was either like, that or this 19, crusher we figure right. 1948 yeah. or so yeah 48 49 wow, that's, that's, that's yeah. the year that these would have had almost no value yeah this thing could have been easily made into a tea race i'm sure yeah. all of you have seen this tea too much but uh, you're just <laughs> too much yeah you're just... <laughs> no you can never see too many teas too much yeah yeah oh so it's nice been really fun yeah scott's really good putting the miles on too i hammer it around yeah this is for errands now and this one is more or less stock height in the front, see? Yeah. But yeah. the back's really low. I said yeah, that's absolutely. Hey, we gotta watch this. Oh, I got yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna get in there. No, yeah. I can't get in there, so we'll see what Scott does. We'll see. Old, uh... <laughs> yeah. Dial 9-1. <nine> <laughs> and hold. Okay. Oh, it's not too bad. Okay. It's actually easier because there's no door or body. Oh, yeah, here we go, though, right? Oh, I'll you just do it, it like right a dirt track, there. like an oval racer. <laughs> you put your foot on, uh... Oh, God. Yeah, it's really yeah, difficult. Yeah, right on there. Oh, you leave it yeah, out yeah. here. Yeah, and then you put it in really? high gear. Put it in high gear, you'll see what happens. Just let it out. And then you put your foot back on the board when you're going down the track. And this is... I just put my foot right. That's, that's how you gear. get into low. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't need it for very long. And, yeah. the, and then to stop oh, except it. that you got to be here. Yeah, and you got to push the pedal a bit to get it to go, too. You know. There you go. There, so that's yeah. how you get going. And to stop, you just jab the reverse and then pedal. To stop, you just jab reverse. A little bit, yeah, little just touch bit. it. Yeah. Until she blows Until back blows. off a bit. And then, yeah, dial it back a bit. So it's like this, and then yeah, yeah. full on, twins. and then <laughs> everybody down. Yeah. And then. And then you're going 55, 60 miles Look at that hour. old man, eh? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> High and comfortable. That guy is not cool at all. <laughs> Really cool to see my though. head doesn't even come to the to the bottom of the window line on that car now. <laughs> Man, this is fun. So it's got a lot of deletes, I see. Yeah, brake delete. Brake delete, starter delete. Yeah. Second now notice battery. the exhaust has not got a lot. It's got baffles delete. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Do you see man. that? Oh yeah. It's it's like a furnace. <laughs> 
pace for you, Hawk. It's, yeah, yeah well, that's pipe. insane. Yeah, that's an insane thing. I don't know if you show it too close, but it's cool. It's got like a, just pieces of pipe kind of resting up against the block to direct the exhaust it's in the vicinity of the... Uh, and uh, this, this puppy here, this barbecue pieces here. <laughs> that's so cool. Look at the little gear drive. Oh yeah, and it's Mantle. backwards, so to tighten it to loosen it. Oh, so that's more, that's richer. Richer and cooler. <laughs> that's backwards, oh, so yeah. funny. Yeah, that's pretty cool though, eh? Hey, there goes your truck. Oh, yeah. well, that's Mitch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's, right, it's got a nice floorboard. Yeah. I think I'm stuck. Okay. But it still has a stock advance on it. What this year is, do you think this chassis is? I think it's a 21. But I don't know for sure. Boy, they sure changed a lot in five years. Yeah, they sure did. Yeah. They really got comfortable after yeah, a while. They, yeah, they really. got pretty I'm fun, surprised yeah. they even caught on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Three T's in the field. Here. All right. Model yeah. T mania continues. Yeah, mania, maintenance mania. Maintenance mania. Upon yeah. inspection, this uh, wheel bearing's a bit loose. Uh, yes, We've, yes. We've uh, tightened the other ones up, but uh, here's what we do to tighten them. We've got a couple of uh, Dino tools here. We've got this over center dash here, which is an antique unit, and just works the treat for this kind of thing. There you go, up in the air, multi tool. Yeah, Gets yeah. after the hubcap here. Yeah. There you go. Get that out. Get this cotter pin out. And we will loosen this nut. And I run them generally just a bit looser on the race car than you would, uh, say, on a street car, potentially. But, uh, you know, we'll just bring them up just a tiny, tiny bit here. So there we are, just bring it up a little bit. These are roller bearings in this car still. Yeah. Tighten her up. Like I said, just a little bit looser than a guy would on a street car, maybe. There we go. Beautiful. These uh, antique tires made in Canada. Still uh, working. <laughs> wow, look at that Edens. Yeah. 30 by three and a half. So, and then we'll just put this lock nut back on. And it's just, just the coolest little tool for that, hey? Oh man, yeah, you keep that in your back pocket and you're just Mr. Model T. Mr. Model T, indeed. So then we'll just... This is a lock nut, so I'll just bring this lock nut up to uh, to lock it. Check it again. Beautiful. I'll throw the old uh, greasy cotter pin back in. One, two, and then oh, another tool we can probably do too. This hubcap thread is a bit uh, poor. Okay, here's another interesting tool. This is thread chaser for the hubcap threads on a Model T. So, <coughs> you just loosen her up here. There. Beautiful. And then we got our made in Canada hubs. There you go. Oh, it's new. I'm going to use my little multi tool here to give them a little tight. There. That'll do. Perfect. Perfect. Race ready. Get back to it. This is the big 15 mile Macklin Trophy. Ten cars, the winners of the previous heat, all lined up, ready to go. And uh, they're on the track right now with the drivers eager and ready, the mechanics just finishing last minute touches, a word or two from the officials and with the officials, and it's been just a little bit hectic getting this last race rolling. It's been one substitution, number 19, who was declared the winner of third race, has been disqualified for technical reasons, the place has been taken by number four. So with those figures. We're ready to go now. It's an all-important race. The pacemaker just started out now, and in a moment or two, we'll have 
The race underway. They'll come back around here past the start line, and that will complete it. Now, in place of number 19, George LeMay, we have number four, which is the Union Tractor and Equipment Company car driven by Tommy Rutter of Calgary. So it's Reliable Motors, Sunland Biscuits, Jacob Brothers Industries, Smelter Company, Smelter Company, rather, Reynolds Used Cars with Stan Reynolds, Eric's Used Cars, the Union Tractor and Equipment Company with Tommy Rutter, Brasso Motors, Central Park and Service Station, and Gas and Oil Products with Gap and Breckenridge in Edmonton. That completes our lineup of 10 cars and the 10 fastest cars on the track today. They're in the back stretch now and coming around behind the pacemaker very, very slowly. The starting lineup was in this order, 13 post position, 7, 9, and 15, followed by 24, 5, 4, and 21. And in the third rank, 17 and 16. Now here they come. Here's Henry Viney, your commentator. And here comes the first car and the race. Well, they're off from the Grand Championship. And out in front and leading as they go into the first turn is the Brassel Motors entry driven by G. Rasmussen. That's big car number nine. In second place, it's number 13. That's Eric Hughes' car. And they're all grouped up there and close in that first four slot. And we'll have to pick them out as they come around the first time. Out in front is the Brassel Motors entry. Moving up into second place now, Eric Hughes' cars and passing on the outside. A car whose number we cannot distinguish at this distance. We'll, we'll pick it up as they come around to complete the official first lap number one. All right, in first place, it's number five. It's number five out there in first place. Reynolds Hughes cars with Stan Reynolds up with Tasco and the driver. It's Stan Reynolds driving in first place with Reynolds Hughes cars out in front. In second place, it's Eric Hughes cars. In third place, it's Brassel Motors. In fourth place, it's Meltzer Brothers Insurance. In fifth place, it's number 16, the gas and oil product uh, car driven by Gavin Breckenridge. That's how they are as they go around to move into lap number two. One of the cars, I believe, is throwing a tire. We'll check on it in a minute. It's car number five out in front. Reynolds used cars with Stan Reynolds at the wheel. He's leading. In second place, it's the Brasso Motors car. Now moving up to take over in third place in place of Eric's car is car number 16, the gas and oil products of Calgary. So that's the order they, the first three cars. It's Meltzer's in fourth place. In fifth place now is number 17. That's the Sunland District Company with Dick Bennett of Edmonton. Those are the top five places. 